Welcome back. This is Skydy with Oilfield Basics, and today I'm going to be discussing arguably one of the most important separation technologies in chemical engineering, as well as a core process that is fundamental to the economic operation of refineries and chemical plants. As we know, crude oil is transformed and refined into many useful products that we see and use every day, such as petroleum, naphtha, gasoline, and so much more. In fact, we have another video that discusses all the different types of products that are expected as well as unexpected that we receive from crude oil if you want to go out and check that within our channel. But before crude oil is converted into these useful products, it must first be separated. This is where distillation, also known as fractionation, comes into play. This video will be discussing how these distillation columns are operated as well as the fundamentals behind how the separate hydrocarbons are separated from that crude oil in order to further be processed and refined to the products we know and love today. Petroleum is a mixture of many organic compounds. Purification and separation of the petroleum crude feedstock is important to obtain many useful products, the main refining separation processes involve removing water, sulfur, and fractionation, also known as distillation. As mentioned, this video is going to focus on the distillation aspect of the process. So the distillation process is used to separate components based on their boiling points. Chemicals like common gas, diesel, and jet fuel achieve boiling points at different temperatures. The columns are used to separate mixed feed streams into their own distinct products. So separation based on boiling points is accomplished by the liquid mixture being heated. When the temperature is high enough, the kinetic energy of a particular hydrocarbon molecule will be sufficient enough for it to escape the intermolecular forces of the liquid phase and finally escape to be a gas. Part of the main chemistry behind a distillation function is molecular volatility. Volatility is a material quality which describes how readily a substance vaporizes. Essentially, it is describing how quickly and how ready a molecule is able to escape into the vapor phase at a given temperature and pressure. Volatility can also describe the tendency of a vapor to condense into a liquid. At a given temperature and pressure, a substance with a high volatility is more likely to exist as a vapor. An example of a highly volatile substance is rubbing alcohol. When a rubbing alcohol is exposed to standard condition, it quickly evaporates. On the other hand, a less volatile substance is less likely to readily evaporate and more likely to stay in its liquid form. A less volatile substance will require much more heating and energy in order to transition into a vapor phase. An example of something that has low volatility is vegetable oil. At standard conditions, vegetable oil will remain in its liquid phase. Hydrocarbon intermolecular forces are very important when it comes to the distillation column and how it works. Because hydrocarbons usually have weak intermolecular forces, they have lower boiling points. However, the more carbons, the stronger the intermolecular force. This means more energy is needed to move them apart so they will have higher boiling points, making them less volatile. As the hydrocarbon molecule gets bigger, this starts to become known as the heavier components. The surface-to-surface -surface contact increases, and this allows the intermolecular forces to increase. Because there are more points of contact where the weakly attracting electrical forces can operate, hence this will increase the viscosity, melting points, boiling points, and all alkane hydrocarbon molecules. Later we will see that these heavier components with the higher boiling points are going to be what ends up at the bottom of the column. This image is a representation of what is going on inside of the column and shows that as you go further down the column, you increase in boiling point temperature with the increase of carbon atoms. At the top, you see like the less amount of carbon atoms, the lower the temperature, but near the bottom, as the carbon chains increase, 
so does the temperature and the boiling point. For most refining industries, there are two types of columns. Both columns are essential and used in the distillation of liquid mixtures to separate the mixture into the individual components or parts based on the difference in volatilities and boiling points. We have a packed bed and a tray. A packed vessel is usually filled with packing material. As you can see, there are various types of packing materials available. The packings can be sections with ceramic racings or saddles. The packing material is used to increase the surface area for mass transfer between gas and liquid phases during the distillation process. The liquid will flow down in the column over a packing surface and the vapor moves countercurrently up the column. Another type of column is the tray column. This type of distillation column will be the main focus on this discussion, but they operate on the same principle as a packed column tower. However, instead of using packed material, they use trays situated at various heights within the tower, also known as stages. There are three main types of trays in use, sieve, valve, and bubble cap trays. Bubble cap trays generally achieve the most efficient separation of product components. The bubble cap design distributes the vapor more extensively, forcing it to bubble through the liquid flowing across the tray. Just like the packing column, the ideal goal is to maximize surface area contact. In general, the tray type columns are more efficient than packed bed type columns, but they can also be more expensive. There are pros and cons to both, and it will just vary from refinery to refinery as to which is used. So overall, what does this process look like? Well, the main components of a distillation column are either used to transfer heat energy or enhance the material transfer. A typical distillation column contains several major components. The vertical shell is where the separation of liquid components is carried out in column intervals such as the trays, plates, or even the packings, which are used to enhance the component separations. A reboiler is used to provide the necessary vaporization for the distillation process. The bottom section of the distillation column is known as the stripping section. Liquid will come out of the stripping section and go to the reboiler where heat is applied and some of the liquid vaporizes and comes back into the column and then rises up. That which remains and is not vaporized goes to the bottom product and is known as the heaviest components. Now near the top of the column, we have a condenser to cool and condense the vapors leaving the top of the column as well as the reflux drum. So the top section of the column is mainly known as the rectifying section. As the vapors go up through the column, the condenser will turn the vapors into liquid as top product and some of this relatively pure product will go back into the column as liquid reflux and allow the top of the column to do some work, hence the enriching or rectifying section. Collected liquid fractions may pass to condensers to cool further and go to storage tanks, but oftentimes most of the products need further processing and will go through more separation processes such as cracking. In terms of distillation columns used in refineries, it is the same basic principle. The tall columns are not on uniform temperature distribution, and as you can see, we have the heavier components near the bottom, where a lot of these products will eventually result in being the lubricating oils, fuel oils, and even residues such as asphalt that are later used for roads. As you go up the column, the temperature decreases and so does the number of carbon molecules. The crude oil starts as a mixed feed and eventually is separated into its separate components as it goes through the different stages within the column. So after watching this video, I hope you have a better understanding of how the distillation process works. Without this initial process and the refining process, we would not have all the products that we have today. The products such as gas, chemicals, fuels, lubricants, and so much more.
the concept of distillation is also used in other places other than refineries. The distillation columns and process is used throughout the chemical industry and is a very important process unit that engineers and industries use worldwide.